So let's talk about the five steps to win more day trades with less stress. Now, these five steps are what every successful trader does, whether it be myself, my hundreds and hundreds of students, or anyone else that has been trading that's consistently profitable in general. We all have these five things in common. So if you're missing any one of these, that's the reason why you're not where you want to be from a trading perspective. So with step number one, as basic as it sounds, you need to define in the first place what a win is because you don't, if you don't know what the goal is and you're running towards something, you're going to lose because you don't know where you're going. So with that being said, in general, from a definition perspective, from trading, is it a big win as far as what a win is? Is it a small win? Is it a 10% gain? Is it a 5% gain? Uh, is it a win but a 2% loss max, right? If you have a lot of risk management focused uh, uh, in the back of your mind, or does it just depend, right? So before I give my answer, leave a comment below answering what you believe. Okay, well, what exactly is a win or what do you think the true definition of a win is when it comes to day trading? My definition of a win is for the most part, it's more, if anything, closest to the it depends because it depends on what trade you're entering. With my strategy, it makes much more sense to say, screw this. I don't care whether it's big win, small win, 10, 5, 2% loss, max, none of that. It's what does the chart say? And what and I can react to it to get my profits within the market as it's moving. So if the market's gonna give me five percent, cool, I get out at five. If it gives me four point five percent, great, I get out at four point five. I'm not gonna arbitrarily stay in because I want a five percent gain. It's at max of four point five percent and it won't go up any higher uh, because or I just want a big win, but it's the market's giving me a small win. I'm up in profit. Get the heck out, right? So to me, a big win is defined as it depends based off of what the market will give you because you're trading as us as retail traders, we're trading within the waves of the hedge funds and the banks. So when they make money, we make money. There's no reason to fight against them. If they don't want to buy anymore at this point in time, you're not going to buy anymore. Otherwise, you're going to lose. That's one of the big problems of what, why people don't win more because they want more than what they can even get in the first place. Now, as far as step number two, this is a really interesting one that a lot of people, a lot of students as well, also kind of mess up because you need to be able to, in order to have win more trades, you need to understand how to sell at break even more often. Because when you think about it, the only options for the most part are selling for a win, selling at break even, or selling at a loss. Now, if you can't get a win, and as an example, you only it's only down to break even or loss, a lot of the time, students and a lot of people trading have it, a problem just admitting defeat, and they just let a loss keep running and running and running and running. But when you think about it, it depends on the trade you're running. But what, look at this piece. It's what sideways consolidation is actually telling you on the one-minute chart. You need to, when you're entering a trade, at least with my strategy on the one-minute chart, a lot of the times things are going sideways. I've literally seen trades and had students multiple times that they're in a trade, it's not going anywhere. It's going sideways. So they're at break even for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. And they're just in the trade. The market's literally telling you, hey, I can't go any higher than this. So either you could stay in this for whatever reason, or you should get out. I'm telling you, it makes way more sense to get out, get have way less stress, and just break even. Maybe a slight amount of profit has been going sideways for hypothetically 5 to 30 minutes. I mean, get out. Get it. Only reason you should stay in a trade is if you're winning. If you're not winning, why are you sitting in the trade hoping? It logically doesn't make any sense unless somehow it's a part of your plan. But again, if it's consolidating, get out and you can always hop back in potentially. But that's step number two. Step number three is having less time in the market. So in my eyes, force limitations are a good thing, such as trading only one hour a day max. So for most people, unless you're already just massively profitable you do not need to be in the market longer than an hour in general which contrary to belief more hours in the market doesn't equal uh, more money less hour in the markets equals more money the reason why is because if you have an example alarms actually on your say think or swim platform it forces you to focus on more quality trades so maybe one two trades max per day instead of a quantity amount of trades Logically thinking, it's a lot easier to find one good trade versus, let's say, 20 different trades at the same day. Because you can, out of those 20, you could say, okay, which one of these will I go ahead 
and shoot for to potentially make a win off of. It's easier and it's less stress, again, hence the whole purpose of this whole video. So you don't need a lot. And put it in a different frame of reference, for, uh, as far as force limitations, some of my students that are the best students are the ones that have a full-time job because they only have maybe lunchtime or the morning one hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is to make a trade. So those limitations force them to be more successful because they're more picky. And some of the students that struggle the most or even outside of my program, but some of the people that struggle the most are the people that say, okay, hey, I'm unemployed. I have nothing to do, but I have some money. Let me see what I can do in the market. No, you have way too much time. If you're staring at the chart or for over an hour, some people stare at the chart for five hours, you're just going to start seeing things that are hypothetical plays, trying to take plays. And then after the play, you realize, huh, I just took an option call to the upside and the market's been going down straight for four hours straight, right? And I know everyone's been there. <laughs> I've been there as well. And that happened because I was trading for more than one hour a day. Stop over trading. Trade less in order to earn more. But having less time in the market helps you do that so you can win more trades because you're not in the market so long. Step number four is journaling makes you money. Now, journal, this is a two-part to it, right? So journaling plus also live trading recordings, uh, which is essentially you live trading but recording yourself when you're actually in the live trade, it technically equals a boring trader that makes a lot of money. Now, let me walk through that again, right? If you do journaling, which is defined as you doing a trade, maybe you recorded it, right? You recorded the live trade. And then after that live trade, you start journaling, say, hey, I entered on this piece. I exited on this piece. Um, before I exited, or sorry, before I ended the trade, I had a planned stop loss here. I had a planned exit here. Um, and I emotionally felt like this during the trade. I emotionally felt like this after the trade. It allows you to analyze if you entered based off your planned strategy, if you broke the rules, and how your emotions were mid-play. And since you recorded it live, that's a little hack, you can also go back and say, okay, okay, this is how my emotions were because you heard yourself. You'll be surprised. Like even for me, or I had some students do this and they send me the recording, they'll be talking, talking, talking before the trade. As soon as they click that button, it's just silence, just, just waiting. And then they start talking a little bit. Okay, I hope it goes down. It's going to go down. I'm sure to go down. And they're just constantly worried. <laughs> and then if you, if you hear that back, a little hack that's to say, okay, okay, when I did that, I was worried. So if I was worried, did I maybe, was I worried because I had too much on the line to lose and I didn't think, and that's, uh, I, did I have too much money on the line? And as a result, I wasn't able to handle, let's say 50 contracts, which is five grand for the spy options, same day expiration. Maybe you can't handle 50 contracts. As a result, maybe you need to go to 30. And you do the 30 and do the recording when you're trading 30 contracts and you don't sound as terrified and you can focus on the play more, right? So keep in mind, there's so many different things you can look for and read into whenever you record your live trades and then also journal them afterwards. But journaling, just in sum it up, I know it sounds boring, but again, the whole purpose of this, to be a successful trader, you need to be a boring trader because you do the journaling, the live trading, and you can make a lot of money from that, I'm telling you. If you do the boring work, you will get all that money. Now, step five is by far the harder one out of a lot of these, so please listen up to this one. You need to, and most people need to, take the greed out of trading. In other words, winning big plays, such as an example of a 100% gainer, and I know you've seen those on scanners and stuff like that if you've traded before, or maybe the big move you want from all the way at the bottom to run all the way to the top, or maybe you're following meme stocks that run up 100%, 200%, et cetera, et cetera. That initially for me and most people it teaches you to devalue the five to ten percent gains daily and now i know a lot of you may be thinking okay well yeah I, no it won't it won't teach me that well put it this way if you hypothetically put in some money and let's say you put in i don't know let's say ten thousand dollars and somehow it doubled to forty thousand dollars but you go over here and you're betting some money and you earn i don't know five hundred dollars in a day it's no comparison. You're not going to care as much, logically speaking. And as a result, most students, and from my statistical analysis, when I've had a lot of students that have done this, 
they typically hold longer because they're devaluing these quote unquote small gains of five to ten percent and those turn to large substantial losses and they start chasing more as a result because they want to find this high again of 100 percent of a gainer and i know i'm speaking to someone out here because i know someone speak talking uh someone listening to this video has done this including myself including students i've had and we could tweak it we can fix it we can help you but you have to realize you do not want this you want consistent profitability which is potentially five to ten percent gains and yes we can get in some 20 percent gains but this is what you want you don't want this you don't want this because this causes chasing this causes the greed this causes so many other negative things period but in general that's the five steps to win more day trades with less stress and again this is literally what every successful trader does and if you realize it I didn't even necessarily get into technical analysis on this video at all because that's a part of it but the biggest part about trading is the psychology of how your mindset is because all of this has nothing to do with this this is a planning step this is uh what is it break even just from a logical step you're like i don't want to stay in the trade it's all no technical analysis it's just psychology